Hello everyone, good evening. Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. So, everyone, last week on stream we beat XCOM Enemy Unknown, Vanilla, as a prelude into setting the stage for XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. It was highly recommended by many of you um, to me as a game to play, and it was a game that I have wanted to play for a long time, but didn't want to do until I beat XCOM Enemy Unknown, and now that that's done, here we are. So, let me just say a few things right out of the gate. Mr. Snackman, good evening. Now I can freely pretend that it never happened. Yes, and so Snack is getting to a point that I'm going to lead into here, which is I have never played this game. Um, I think I got it for free on the PlayStation, booted it up, and, like, pushed start, and then had to stop and never played. So I know nothing. This is completely blind. And from what I understand, um the story and the lore of XCOM Enemy Unknown are non-canonical and are retconned or just, you know, contradict with the story in this game. So what I'm mainly going to be looking at in terms of the connection between the two is any story connectivity, but also how the gameplay changes and evolves from one iteration to the next. So that's on the table. Now, going back to that point, because I've never played this game before, um, please don't give me any spoilers about the story or, you know, what's going to happen or anything like that, um, unless I specifically ask for them so I can enjoy the blind um, experience of just, like, letting it surprise me and have no idea what's going to happen. Now, if I ask, like, you know, functional questions about gameplay mechanics, that's totally cool. With You know, that's fine. Um, but, you know, um, don't tell me that Snape kills Dumbledore, that kind of stuff. Now, um, hey, hey, Neo, good evening. How you doing? Good to see you. I am playing with War of the Chosen, and my buddy Kay has told me that I want to play in such a fashion that the DLCs are integrated into the game properly, um, and I think I've done that. I haven't really changed much. Uh-oh, IBK. No spoilers. No spoilers. Thank you. Um, so what I did was, I, and I don't know if there's something special I need to click, but basically, um, I've clicked... Hey, Crab, good evening. How you doing? Um, in terms of gameplay, uh, I haven't really changed anything. It gets all default. I, I turned on the subtitles, um, and, you know, I, that that's it. And then when I go into new game here, I'm going to play on veteran. And... Oh, good idea. Hey, Neo, what's up? In both places. Oh, there's a no spoilers tag I can add. Says IBK. That's great. Let me add that. Um... I added it. Perfect. Thank you for that. That was a great idea. I did that. Hey, hey Ruben. Oh man, that sounds like a good evening. Well, let's let's chill out together, Ruben, and enjoy some XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. There we go. So IBK has helped us out with the settings. Now, um, we're gonna play veteran. Hey Brew, good evening. Good to see you. And I'm going to go to advanced view, and I'm not really doing any of this advanced options because I feel like this is probably like you play it a second time kind of thing. So I'm not going to mess with this. I'm playing on default settings, and I think we're good. Okay, thank you, Snack. All right, then I'm going to go click Next, and um, it says 
integrated downloadable content updates and integrates XCOM 2 downloadable content into the War of the Chosen expansion. Um, and it says, enable this for a balanced gameplay experience, which includes the downloadable content features. Disabling this option will restore the downloadable content to its base game functionality, but all of the content will remain enabled. Um, and so this is what Kay was talking about. Um, and I can't remember that that's right, Ruben. It's brand new. Um, ah, good one, Brewy. Yeah, get some food, my friend. Just go legend difficulty easy? I don't know about that. Um, so I'm doing... Um, War of the Chosen. Let me quickly check something, actually. Because Kay talked about this. Um, bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Give me one second, everybody. Sorry. What I want to check with this is whether or not I want to do this or, um, oh no, it wasn't K. it was Ruben. So Ruben says, do not turn on integrated DLC. Okay, so I'm going to do that then. Perfect, perfect. Okay, you haven't played this one yet. Okay, perfect. Well, this is my first time, too, so I'm going to turn this off, okay? And, um... I'm going to turn on Alien Hunters and Shen's Last Gift. So, we're playing with, like, all the DLC. Hey! Super Game, what's up? Good evening. Yeah, that'll get you when the, when the kid wakes up, Brew. All right, everybody. So, sorry for the delay on this, but I wanted to get the settings right off the bat. So, Ruben warned me that if I do this, then it puts the DLC stuff into the game in such a fashion that you get the content without trying to, you know, having to do the quest themselves. Um, and it's too easy. So, I kind of want to try it this way. All right, so we're set. Let's do it. Accessing the feed now. We're in. But I don't know for how long. We're in what? You seeing this? Uh, Way too much security, even for Advent. Advent? That's no ordinary gene therapy clinic. Uh-oh. They were telling the truth. Or they're leading us into a trap. A really obvious trap. We'd need an army to march in there right now. I've got a better idea. Outrider, this is central. Whoa. Go. So th um, this is amazing. We've got a police state, apparently, that we're living in. Robocop is here. Robocop looks angry. Central has changed up. I was noticing that too, Snack. Whoa. It looks like we're more rough and tumble um, guerrilla warfare type going up against, uh, you know, Big Brother in this game. Whereas in last game, we kind of like were aligned with Big Brother. Wasn't our fault. Who's this dude? Uh-oh. They're speaking Please. scary language. There's no need for any of this. I will do what you ask of me. I just need additional time. He just needs some more time. Whoa. You're one of those. You must understand. I had no choice. Outrider, report. <laughs> Whoa, we knocked him down. I am the Outrider, apparently. So, you do exist. 
Um, I have visual confirmation. Of what? Are I don't know. Sure? Reapers are always sure. I'll take your word for it. Cover your She's a reaper. Get the hell out of there. They can't know we were here. Yet. Understood. Now the real war begins. All right. Wow. All right, so this... Uh-oh. Excitement continues to build as city centers across the globe prepare... It's a state-run propaganda news channel. ...up at the site of the Great Accord, celebrating the formation of the Advent Coalition. Yeah, Keeping Advent Coalition. Humanity. Twelve new gene therapy clinics will be opening in select cities... By wow, the the okay. The attempted attack by fringe elements... We've got a dystopian game. ...facility in Paris... Thankfully, remain unaffected. In response Gene to therapy. Unprovoked intrusion on the eve of our most beloved celebration, the speaker reaches out. The speaker. Who's this schmoozer? A small number of dissidents again repeat the mistakes of the old world. Striking as we celebrate the benevolent savior who time and again offers only friendship and compassion. Is interesting. The speaker. The elders. Uh oh. That looks like the alien from the end of the first game. Celebrations. Perfect. Wow. All right. The advent of ministration reminds you to report all suspicious activity. Oh, we got a scan. Checkpoint. You were right. Definitely got their hands full today. Huh. Stay focused. Prep gate crasher. 60 seconds. Gate crasher. Go on through, sir. Thanks. I'm wearing a nice pea coat. Oh my god. What happened? Did my gun set off your alarm? Oh. There was no need to do that. Oh, X4. Not XCOM, X4. Oh my! Look at that! Whoa! Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay, Gatecrasher. Hey, Joker! What's up, my friend? Good to see you. Adam Nash. Hello. Good evening. Sorry, everybody. I'm a little behind on chat. I'm like paying attention to this exposition, this prelude to the game. Ooh, it looks like my, my units are coming out. We've got a lander. We're in position. Oh, these are the OG weapons. Oh, here we go. All right. <laughs> that is right. Okay, so everyone, um, now that we're back into it, I'm sorry, I was like riveted to the game's story. And I mean that seriously. There is so much more story in this game um, than there was in the first game. And that's cool. You know, the first game was just like, the whole story was aliens are attacking, we don't really need to know anymore. We kill them. Dr. Shen kind of wonders every once in a while what's going on. Dr. Valen interrogates them into her, in her evil torture chamber. Um, you know. And so anyway. In this game, there's a lot more context. They really fleshed it out and gave things more depth. So let me just say, um, as a reminder, uh, no spoilers, please. I am totally new to this. And then... To answer your question, yes, I have a um, I have a doctorate, so I am a teacher, Adam, um, but I teach uh, college English. 
Uh, so not the good, the useful kind of doctor, like the more, you know, academic, useless kind. Now, I'm going to look at this statue for a moment. It looks like, uh, let's see if I can rotate the camera just like I did before. Yep, I can. Yeah, the controls seem to be identical, except the interface looks much smoother. The tiles are smaller than the first game, I feel like, uh, and more defined. It looks like they just kind of um, cleaned the UI up, you know, made it a, a bit tighter uh, and, and smaller. Whereas the, the last game, I, I have no problem with it, but the UI was much larger, chunkier. Oh, you have a time limit in this game. Yeah, so from what I understand about this game, the only thing I know is that this seems to presuppose that we lost to the alien invasion in some fashion and are fighting against nearly insurmountable odds. Whereas in the first game, we were fighting against, I suppose, nearly insurmountable alien odds, but we ended up winning. Now, what I'm seeing here is that that didn't happen, and this is a statue of brotherhood, I guess, of, of picking up the pieces and some kind of unity between the Elder? I don't know. So we're going to find out more as we go. All right. Um, so we move here, and the, the cover indicators are the same, so the partial shield means half cover. And we're going to meet move Peter Osei over here. He's got the same gun, the assault rifle that you start out with in the previous guy game. Uh, and I'll move over here. Okay, the unit flag shows the selected soldier's health and actions remaining. Soldiers get two actions per turn. Osei now has one action remaining. Okay. Position, but I'm exposed here. It's better than nothing. But see if you can't find a safer position further out. All right, so I'm looking at this. All right, so I can move here, and the full shield means this is full cover. High pro uh, cover provides excellent defense, low cover, moderate defense. Always try to end your move in cover. Yes, indeed. Okay, Neo, thank you. I love how you moved, Neo, and... Um, Hey, Mitch, I'm sorry, I uh, I missed your text. Uh, Mitch, Joker, everybody, hello. So good to see you. Hey, Sydney F., what's up, my friend? Thanks for subscribing. We're getting into some XCOM War of the Chosen full shebang. I'm just kind of like, I apologize, I'm I'm taking it all in, as this is my first time. The, the graphics, so... Super Game is saying it didn't come out too much longer. I think it's like um, than the first game, maybe four years, not like a huge leap or something. The graphics package looks similar, but the resolution tighter, crisper um, in this game, which is good. The whole engine itself seems to run smoother than the game's engine from the first game, uh, which is nice also. Um... Oh, I see, Neo. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We were playing on Iron Man Impossible Difficulty and lost um, the first base mission. Well, that makes sense. I do want to go back to the original game and play the DLC, but not now. Um, and so I'm looking at the icon. It looks like I have five health. I don't know what this green bar is below my health. If that's some kind of shield, if that's my ammo, what that is. We'll find out. Um, but it does look like it tells me on the character name, like, on this character info plate, like, what cover I'm in right now with my character. Um, oh, it's their will bar. I see. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna move over here. Crasher 2, stay close. Keep pace with Crasher 1. You got that right. All right. A soldier can cover long distances by dashing. And it uses both. So, so far, the, the control of the game seems nearly identical. Double time. They're holding position. We're going to have to go through them. Hey, Hydra King. We're ready to What's up, my friend? I know, I'm so pumped to play it. 
Keep to the shadows until you're absolutely set. We'll only get one shot at this. In the shadows. Oh. Concealment. Interesting. So this is this is definitely new. You could hide yourself with your ghost suit in the last game, but there this mechanic is new. Most missions start with the squad in concealment. Use concealment to set up ambushes. Interesting. So this is a new wrinkle. If any of your soldiers are spotted, all of your soldiers lose the benefits of concealment. Wow, if anybody gets spotted. Oh, awesome, Hydra King. So everyone, this is all made possible because when I beat XCOM Enemy Unknown, K, which I'm pronouncing incorrectly, um, is it K or Key or K? You can tell me or not tell me, but anyway, K gave a nice donation after we won as a celebration, and I used that to purchase this collector's edition of XCOM 2 on Green Man Gaming for like 85% off or something, so it made it so I could buy this game affordably. So thank you, my friend, for that. All right, here we go. So Snack's saying you can see enemy line of sight pr pretty clearly at least. Okay. That's cool. I, that is something that was so desperately missing from the first game was the ability to see enemy line of sight at all or to know um, when you moved. Uh, exactly. Sponsorship. Just like you sponsored me, IBK, in RuneScape, my friend. So it's... Like, before, in the first game, when you would move, you wouldn't know if you could see the enemy when you got into position, and if they could see you. It was so, it um, and so it was very devious. Ah, so you say it's more Ki or Kai? Super game? We'll find out. I want to say it correctly. But it's almost meme-worthy at this point that I've been doing it wrong the entire time. You still need to see them to see your line, their line of sight. Um, but in concealment, you have much higher sight. Ooh, cool. So if you're in concealment, you can... You you expose more of the fog of war or something? And that makes sense. I mean, you, you don't know... If you don't know where they are, of course, you're going to get surprised when you move into their line of sight. But if you do know where they are... It's nice to know, at the very least, if moving into a certain position will allow you to fire on them. That was so frustrating in the first game, where, like, you would move to a space, and then you would no longer be able to see the enemy or shoot them. Alright, I'm moving where they're telling me, by the way. Staying low. We're staying low. Don't get too close. They'll be spotted from a sure and we'll lose our advantage. Oh, so, okay, you're saying it's to speed up the Overwatch train. So they're making this so you don't have to just play super defensively the entire time. So nearby enemies will spot a soldier that moves too close to them. These tiles are marked with a red highlight. So correct me, let me, let me see if I'm getting this correct. As long as I'm in concealment, I see these tiles which represent their line of sight. Is that correct? If I lose concealment, will I no longer have these tiles highlighted? Okay. And then, if I'm like here, do they get to take a turn and move? And then, like, can they see me if I started out of their line of sight, but they move on their turn and expose me, oh, they patrol? Okay, exactly. So that's that's something I'll have to figure out. All right, anyway, we'll go over here. Yeah, that beloved mechanic is still there. We've got surprise on our side. Hopefully that's enough. I hope it's enough. Whoa. We'll thank the old man. I mean, these Advent soldiers look incredibly dangerous. All right. I've got the trap on them. Permission to engage. Do it. 
Oh, we're going to get to fight him. We've got to drop on him. If your soldier's behind cover, um, then they move closer. You can also count toward being concealed, but only if the cover is in between them. And ah, I see. Oh, okay. Don't increase their rank until you get back to base. Perfect. Hey, hey. Yes, Papa Gino, I am. I beat XCOM 1 last week, and now I'm playing XCOM 2 Collector's Edition. Brand new, first time, right now. All right, so let's see here. I mean, this is like, don't tell me the answer to this. But this looks like human-on-human -human violence, which is not something you did in the first game. I don't know if these are like human-alien hybrids, or full alien, or full human, whatever. We'll find out, but uh, the enemy is different. I do like that even though we appear to be a guerrilla faction, like a guerrilla army, we kept the, the convention of putting our national flag on the back of our armor from the first game. Just an interesting little touch, you know? Um, like, I don't know what nationalities mean under the Advent Coalition, but anyway. So press enter or left click on an action button to activate the tactical combat UI. Okay. Oh, nice, okay. Click fire weapon or press enter to confirm the attack. So I have a 68% chance to hit this guy. And I can still tab target. This tactical combat screen looks a little bit different. Okay, snack. Perfect. Oh, okay. It is about to pop off. So... Is it... The American Revolution with uh, sci-fi. One if by land, two if by sea. First of all, let me just say, while we're in this, while we're like in the, the, the business of fighting, even though this game is like only four years um, older, you know, after the original game, the graphics on this are tremendous. So, like, my gun, my guy, like, everything looks great in this game. This is really... And it's an older game, too. So, I'm happy with, you know, the visuals. Uh, let's see. I think I, the 68 was the best chance that I had. Hey, hey! Sir Theodore, good evening. It is a Tuesday, my friend. So, no RuneScape. We're fighting aliens in a brand new campaign on XCOM 2. All right, I'm going to fire the weapon, and let's see what happens. Oh, my God. Whoa, wait a minute. Spoiler. Did you guys see that? Yeah, that's right, Sir Theodore. This is right up your alley. We're the White Knights in this game, Sir Theodore, going against the evil forces. That target, that Advent soldier that I just shot, bled alien blood. That was the yellow alien blood that I saw so many times in the autopsy room, right? Oh, perfect, Sir Theodore. Yeah, it'd be great to have you stay. Oh, you can close the doors in this game. Cool. Yeah, Super Game, I think that that is okay. Just no story spoilers, my friend. Um, the entire squad loses concealment when any soldier attacks an enemy. So we just lost concealment because we fired a very loud gun. Breaking windows or kicking open doors makes sense. A soldier is flanked or steps on a detection tile. Ah, okay, so this explains it. So, if, they, if they're if they moving on patrol and we get flanked, we become exposed. And the jig is up, they as it were. You now. How about you all shoot first and celebrate later? No problem. Alright, so Anna Ramirez. 
is here. And we can move Anna up to get cover behind this car. Look at this car. This is exactly Ryan Gosling's cruiser from Blade Runner 2049. It, which is taken from the original Blade Runner. That is awesome. Dystopian police work at its finest. All right, so let me get over here. I appreciate the bravery, but you're dangerously close right now. Be careful. Okay. We're going to enter tactical UI. And click on the highlighted tab or press tab. All right, so I've got 38%, which is terrible. 35 or 63. Now interesting about this it is a cyber truck it feels like that <laughs> it's so good snack yeah so they explode like uh cop cars and you know 1970s movies that's perfect look at this um i'm gonna just take a moment to pay attention to the game's ui again like we were saying it's more streamlined it's crisper and it's telling me that my damage range is three to five and it's breaking it down by saying um you know the enemy's in low cover so i lose 20 percent to hit i have a good angle whatever that means um my weapon i'm in range so i get 13 percent there and aim so there's more transparency about the calculation of to hit Apparently, I can open and close these, like, if I care about this. Ah, uh, I'm not shooting directly through cover. I have a little bit... I see. That's what the good angle means. Okay. Um, so, I really like how this screen looks, and the damage seems more clear. We're going to fire the weapon. Do it. See? Yellow, green-ish, alien blood. We got it. Yep. Oh my god. They missed. Whew, that was close. Look at this. Oh my god. She's dead. She's dead. Um, Anna Ramirez is dead. Damn it. You can't take risks like that. Watch your flanks. So that's how you want to play it. I, that's what I take it as, Sir Theodore. So, you missed the beginning, Sir Theodore, but this game appears to be a police state, and in this dystopian police state, the government's um, brute squad is in league with the aliens and might be aliens, or some kind of evil experiment alien-human hybrid uh, thing. I don't know. But don't appear human. Now, I'm going to say this. Here's a few things. Uh, I don't know what this means. This means I can pick up their gun, maybe, if I move there. I don't get that. But I like how they say that woman was telling us, like, you know, you got to watch your flanks. She told me to move there. She specifically told me to go there. And then she's chastising me about my movement choices you gotta you gotta chill out um it's loot it'll come into play later fantastic that's awesome that's a new mechanic too look at this this right here that this person has cover behind is a futuristic trash can and you'll be happy to know that trash cans of the future look very much like trash cans of the present. Although it looks like it's entirely enclosed. I don't know how that works. Maybe it opens when you approach it. Um, anyway, I'm going to move over here. Maneuver to flank the enemies so you can hit them from vulnerable angles. Cover does not protect a unit from the side. Nice work. Crash the advantage before they get around you. Well, it's kind of like Super Game. Um, in, the, in the first game... In the tutorial mission, you have a, a unit die in that as well. Like, actually, everybody dies except for maybe one unit from the first mission of XCOM Enemy Unknown. So it's it's pretty much par for the course that in the tutorial they're going to kill somebody for you. Anyway, 
Um, attacking a flank unit ignores its defensive bonus, and there's a high chance you'll score a critical hit. Do not let enemies flank you. Ah, yes. All right, so we're going to go into the cool screen. Yeah. I really like this tactical view. All right, let's see. We got 82 or 64. All right, we'll take the heightened 82 and just... This is for Anna. That's right. Uh-oh, I don't like this. Oh, someone tagged him. He's down. Or she. They. Whoa, look at that gun. Man, that gun is pretty baller. Look at the magazine on that gun. Central, reporting in. In the sights. Oh my gosh, you're right. Look at that face. They're us. It is human hybrid. Human hybrid soldiers. Oh my gosh. Reward for obedience and service. We've all heard rumors. I just never believed it was true. Oh my gosh. But we find what we're looking for today. I promise you. This synthesizer music in the background is Let's so move. good. Somber. Futuristic. Nailed it. You have an advent transport closing on your position. Okay. Cover the left side. Nigerian guy is still here, Sir Theodore. Still here. So let me I was Kay, I was just about to ask that. Is that the same guy from the previous game? Is control the same dude? Oh my gosh, he's changed. He had like a crew cut. And was real, you know, like, straight arrow. Now he's just, like, this ruggedly handsome, you know, stud muffin commando. I'll take it, you know. Uh, this is a huge upgrade for all of us. Anyway, um, all right, so I can get a clear view. Reinforcements are coming. All right, so they're going to be coming from over here, I assume. And I'm going to move my dude, the Nigerian guy, Peter Osei, over here. I'm on it. Keep your eyes peeled. Fire on anything that moves. All right, so there's another central who's in the base, and then there's this other central who's with me. Or maybe that was the same central right here that was talking to me with that video screen. I'm a little confused. Soldiers in Overwatch will shoot, uh, shoot the first enemy unit they see moving. Perfect. So this is just like the first game. Activate Overwatch now. Doing it. And doing it. The main entrance is clear. We need to move on the package. All right. I don't know what the package is. We're apparently trying to get something from this gene splicing clinic. So they were advertising that in the, the, the kind of... Um, prelude video that we just saw they were talking about all these gene splicing happy times clinics but i think what might be going on in these gene therapy fun time clinics is you get made into alien human soldier uh and so it's not all you're looking for or maybe it is i don't know all right so central john bradford i'm gonna move over here just because i want to pick up this treasure i don't know if that's wise but i'm doing it i can't they're not they're not cool with that um what do you what do you want me to do move into cover and and uh oh okay Oh, go into the building and secure the package oh okay you're right yes that's exactly what they want me to do thank you I was like preparing for the reinforcements, so I was setting everybody up. No, no, no. We got we don't have enough time for that. Here we go. Yes. They brought it back from the first game, everybody. The smash through the windows for no reason. <laughs> Whoa. Soldiers automatically collect dropped items when they end a move inside the yellow loot radius. But the, they rig their stuff to explode? That is hilarious. 
It's like um, the Mission Impossible mission loadout. It'll self-destruct. All right. Anyway, I'm going to go here and get this loot. Or not. They want me to move right on it. I see. Okay. Pick it up. So, Jane Kelly has recovered a scope, which is a item from the first game. She's got some grenades on her belt, too. Let me use those babies. There was a door right there, but he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right, we're going to go back here for some cover. Oh my, here they come. Here they come. Wow, their ships look awesome. This game looks great. The art design for the uh, the alien technology is really good. Reinforcements just hit the ground. They're getting nervous. Oh, Sir Theodore. The right they love breaking windows. Oh. Here comes our dude. Yes! Look at that Overwatch. This guy has come to play. He did five damage. Whoa, he was... He cursed at me an alien. And and I'm sorry if that's offensive. I don't know what the name of their language is, so I'm just going to call it alien. but Or alien ease. I don't know what I should say here. But he he did a gesture like a rude gesture like how dare you shoot my my combat brother like that um and now we you know we really see emotions that were absent from the aliens in the previous game the, in the previous game the aliens would watch their brothers sisters whatever get obliterated and not bat an eyelash now they get upset That's right. My business partner. I went to happy hour with Dennis just last week. That's right. The red coats. Exactly. The alien was issuing a command, huh? And again, everyone, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm moving very slowly and just taking in all the sights in this game. But these beds right here in the gene therapy clinic look disturbingly familiar to the alien, like, bath beds that we would find on their ships in the previous game. I mean, there's a little bit more cushioning, maybe, but I've seen these before. I'm familiar. Uh-oh, Peter's going to stall him. I'll tell you what, this dude has been gangbusters. Here we go. All right. Now, they want me to fire with him? Forty-nine, forty-eight. Now, firing is bad. Um, I don't have a grenade. Let me look and see if there's a square they want me to move him on. No, I think they want me to go um, Overwatch. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, you're right. I I got to do better. I'm, I don't want to come across as, you know, xenophobic. And I mean literally xenophobia in terms of the other being off world but I I I don't really know a way around it 